Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. Today is Thursday, October 11th, 2012. The links will be posted in YouTube's video description, so check them out. Alright, we're going to continue with Jordan. That's the biggest news besides the skyjacking um, of the Syrian plane by Turkey. Is The U.S. is deploying troops, or has deployed troops to Jordan. Now they're saying what? According to Leon Panetta, that this is for chemical weapons. Chemical weapons inside Syria, and this is what I've been uh, talking about over the past couple months. So it seems to actually be taking place, and the fact that they're going to Jordan tells you exactly what it's for, uh, for Syria, because that's what the original exercise was for, uh, that eager line 2012. It was right on Syria's border, so. And then all of a sudden you have kind of like this instability going on in Jordan, so it could be too that they, you know, that they're going to make sure that they have the regime there as far as that King Abdullah goes before they oust him. But uh, yeah, Syria in the firing line is U.S. deploys covert mission to Jordan. So a covert task force was sent to Jordan and Syria, or uh, yeah, in the case Syria loses control of its chemical weapons, the U.S. officials said. The team will be stationed at a base 35 miles from the Syrian border, making it, making it the U.S. military's closest presence to the embattled nation. It's also interesting to say, uh, or note, if you uh, don't remember or if you didn't see those videos that I covered about these chemical weapons, is Israel was the one that was really pushing this, pushing this. They were actually guiding the, um, the Free Syrian Army along with all the mercenaries and uh, uh, travelers, right, as Tarpley puts it, basically uh, Islamist extremists um, that are armed by Saudi Arabia, Qatar, getting cash and communications from Israel, UK, and uh, the West. Also, getting help with intelligence. We're talking about CIA and stuff like that as well, and Mossad. Uh, tracking these chemical weapons. So they were getting the equipment and getting reconnaissance and intelligence from Israel to the Free Syrian Army to track these weapons. Now remember, there's two options. A, if these chemical weapons get in the hands of the terrorists, well then that's grounds for uh, military intervention, boots on the ground. If it gets, uh, if it moves from the Syrian government's um, if they try to move it, i.e. to get it away from the terrorists, uh, then they, that's going to be grounds too. So if the Syrian government moves it or if it gets in the hands of the terrorists. So you can see where this is going. It's kind of a catch-22, which is by design. Of course, they will be linked with Hezbollah, and Hezbollah is linked with Iran. And of course, that will be the, um, the, the way into Iran or let it spill over the borders and that. 150-member team of planners and other military specialists, hmm, I wonder who they could be, was covertly deployed in Jordan to aid the country's army with the influx of refugees across the tumultuous border with Syria, officials told the New York Times. In addition to helping manage the 180,000 refugees estimated to have fled, the, uh, fled, yeah, fled across the border, task force will also re reportedly weigh measures like establishing a buffer zone and humanitarian corridor like Turkey. So, man, this really is like a pincer attack. Uh, the U.S. personnel will be based in the training center north of the city of Amman, close to Syria's southern border. So then we have from Land Destroyer, U.S. deploying military personnel to Syrian Jordan border, part of a long planned attempt to spur defections, divide and destroy uh, Syria, as articulated in the Brookings Institute, assessing options for regime change. I mean, that's what they call it, right? <laughs> they keep calling it a humanitarian uh, crisis and, and ending the crisis, but it's a regime change. And uh, the people that write the plans to do this, you know, i.e. the real, the real uh, government or governance, uh, these think tanks, not your uh, democratically, uh, yeah, non-democratic, non-elected uh, douchebags in Washington. So it says, while the idea of a buffer zone is meant to look like a knee-jerk reaction to recent escalations, in reality this has been planned since March 2012. The idea was proposed by corporate financier Brookings Institute and Middle East Memo Number 21, assessing options for regime change. Foreign troops in Jordan, including U.S. troops, may be playing a role in providing additional pressure south of Syria, while Turkey attempts to pressure Syria from the north. Um, of course, and then, like I said, you have uh, you have Israel as well. The idea is to stretch out Syrian forces, relieving NATO-backed terrorists operating within the country. Of course, while the Western media claims that these are merely troops helping with humanitarian concerns, they are undoubtedly doing all in their power to present Syria with a credible threat to force Syria to divide its troops, while attempting to stoke paranoia and panic in the minds of Syrian officers and politicians the West hopes to lure into defecting with large swaths of cash. 
with the fact that the West is openly arming, funding, and backing the terrorist groups to, uh, linked directly to Al Qaeda, not only in Syria but in Libya, as well as their recent announcement of the delisting of the terror group Mujahideen or MEK, that's for Iran, their opposition group, it would not be difficult for Syria's allies to build up international support to send a monitoring group only upon Damascus' request to address the reality of the humanitarian concerns on the borders. The presence of this monitoring group would raise the stakes for Western policymakers and their proxies and would discourage the influx of weapons and foreign fighters that have been costing Syrians their lives for over a year. U.S. policy openly states that they would prefer bleeding Syria to death over the long term, even if it could not succeed in exacting regime change, thus betraying their narrative of attempting to end a humanitarian crisis. Yeah, see, they want to get Assad in a multi-front war, this is according to Brookings Institute. Uh, such a mobilization could persuade Syria's leadership to oust Assad in order to preserve itself. And advocates argue that this additional pressure could tip the balance against Assad in Syria if other forces were aligned properly. Okay, so Iraq, right? Soaring violence signals Al-Qaeda comeback in Iraq. We were just talking about how they were trying to get uh, um, oil deals with Kurdistan and, um, and uh, arms deals with Russia, They're getting a new flag and national anthem. They're asserting their sovereignty, right? saying they're not going to participate in Syria. So, oh, all of a sudden, Al-Qaeda's back in Iraq. So, training camps are poorly established along the Syrian border. <laughs> so, violence has been decisively on the rise over the past few months in Iraq with death tolls that are at multi-year highs. Much of the violence has come from the Sunni west of Iraq with Al-Qaeda in Iraq showing surprising staying power. The latest growth of Al-Qaeda in Iraq seems to be bolstered by the western-backed civil war in Syria with the group setting up training camps along the Syrian border and Al-Qaeda having sent fighters into Syria at the and taking advantage of a new influx of jihadists into the region of massive amounts of weapons and cash flowing in from around the world, kind of like what they did to Somalia. U.S. is concerned about Iran, Iraq, and Syria alliances. as analysts. So Gordon Duff of, I believe it's Veterans Today or some, uh, he says that, you know, we have reports that there has been a plan in motion to divide Syria and was going to start with the uh, claiming of a buffer zone by Turkey. U.S. troops began moving into Jordan a few days ago. There's no secret about that anymore. He's talking about what we just talked about. Simultaneously, the U.S. newspapers, or propaganda machines, are reporting massive al-Qaeda forces inside Iraq we just covered. This is another phony imaginary story. My own opinion, of course, is that there needs to be a no-fly zone over Turkey since they seem to have difficulty following international conventions. He talks about Erdogan's hollow promise he made over a year ago about defending Palestinian rights, and now he's become the pirate. He's the one who's, who accused Israel. Now he's acting as an Israeli surrogate, and there's a little doubt about where these orders came from. They go to Washington, they move to Ankara, and when asked about the uh, recent influx of... Uh, 150 strong military task force that was sent to Jordan over refugees. He says that has no substance at all. The U.S. is making plans to begin with what they believe uh, the reoccupation of Iraq to move troops in there because they are creating prior to the election the need to defend ourselves from a proposed Iraq attack on the United States and that is of course after the Iranian Minister of Defense had visited Iraq. So in conclusion, there are deep concerns with the U.S. that a coalition between Iran, Iraq, and Syria will stand against Israel and Turkey, which frankly is their long-serving surrogate since the Ottoman time. Then we have Iraq helps keep Syria fueled from October 8th. Iraq is providing the embattled Syrian government with fuel oil needed for power generation of Financial Times reported on Monday. It says the Maliki government, propped up by the United States, this is UPI, uh, is under a one-year contract to provide Damascus government a facade, which Washington wants dismantled with 700, almost a million uh, tons of fuel oil. Iraq oil output will nearly triple by 2035, says Landmark Study. We kind of covered this recently. Iraq could overtake Russia as the world's second largest oil supplier behind Saudi Arabia by the 2030s, nearly tripling its current output, according to a report from the International Energy Agency. Then we have this article from yesterday, October 10th. Uh, Iraq officially retreats from ambitious oil plans. So just like the Shell deal with Kurdistan and all that, you just have to retreat on everything, right? Uh, that's because what they're backed. Uh, they're they're propped up by the West, so they can only do so much as far as uh, uh, their autonomy goes. It goes on. It says that uh, it recently nudged out Iran as OPEC's second largest producer, and further production gains would solidify its place behind uh, Saudi Arabia. Then next up we have. 
U.S. accuses Hezbollah of aiding Syria's crackdown. So now, here we go. Remember Lebanon with the drone going over there? Uh, uh, basically, Lebanon, they're saying that it came from Lebanon, a drone over Israeli airspace. U.S. accuses Hezbollah of aiding Syria's crackdown. This is actually from August 10th, 2012, but only a few months ago. It just ties it in with this article, which is just two days ago, October 9th. And it's titled, Syrian Rebels Warned to Take Battle to Hezbollah Stronghold. So, again, this is kind of a big deal. Um, the Western-backed terrorists are going to take the battle to um, Lebanon now. Syrian rebels warn Lebanon Shiite Hezbollah that they would move the ongoing battle in Syria to the heart of Beirut's southern suburb, a Hezbollah stronghold that the Shiite group failed to halt its support for the Syrian government. It's interesting little uh, quote here uh, from the Free Syrian Army Joint Command uh, leader. He goes on, he's talking about holding how the rebels were holding 13 Hezbollah hostages. He also uh, talked about how they acknowledged that they committed a grave mistake by believing that they were fulfilling a uh, jihadist duty against an international conspiracy aimed at strife-stricken Syria. So apparently Hezbollah is confirming sending that drone into Israeli airspace. It was very close to Israeli's nuclear plant without being detected by advanced Israeli and U.S. radars. He says this is only part of our capabilities, adding that Israel's or Israelis have admitted to their security failure despite being provided with the latest technologies by Western powers. This is after this article from the 8th of October. No drone detected crossing from Lebanon into Israel. UN force says it hasn't spotted any breach of Israeli airspace from Lebanon. Responsibility for the UAV mission has yet to be claimed. So I don't know if he's just blown smoke or what, but uh, he goes on. He says that they're going to they're send more drones over Israel. But uh, this comes to mind, right? Remember that drone that was basically landed? <laughs> landed, uh, it was a U.S. drone, uh, supposedly high-tech, and uh, brought down by the Iranians. And there's a lot of people that think that they was just handed to them by the West so that they can go ahead and re uh, reverse engineer it, put it in the hands of Hezbollah, have him blow the smoke and say, oh, yeah, yeah, that was us, that was us. And then they can link the drone uh, to Iran. So, Patriot missile battery has been deployed in Carmel region. Defense forces in Israel deployed the Patriot anti-missile battery uh, just two days after the drone penetrated Israel's airspace. The IDF did not confirm two incidences are connected. Obama announces yet more s Iran sanctions. So more sanctions on Iran. Sanctions focus on natural gas technology companies. With their oil industry now under a virtual state of embargo, he is now moving against Iran's natural gas exports, not a huge portion of their economy by any means. And so the Obama regime uh, basically is proud of what it's doing to the Iran's economy, even though they're surviving. They have mostly harmed the civilian economy, while the regime-run businesses are able to find ways to circumvent the bans. Also, recently you have what? Top shipping line Merce says halts Iran service. So... The world's biggest container shipping company has stopped port calls to Iran as Washington sanctions pressure on the Islamic Republic mounts. So they stopped their shipping. Then, NY then NYPD concerned or is concerned about an Iran terror and should put U.S. security on alert. So first they cite the Israeli lobbyists who su suggested a Pearl Harbor type false flag attack may be necessary to get the Obama regime to go to war with Iran, saying that uh, it would be best if somebody else started the war. So in light of that call for a false flag attack, NYPD on alert for Iran terror should be a major concern to those charged with protecting U.S. national security. They said uh, that a possible conflict between Iran and Israel is a particular area of concern given New York City's large Jewish population. One issue is the potential for retaliation attack on New York City by Iran and Hezbollah, said NYPD. Interesting, it says considering the intimate ties between the rogue NYPD counterterrorism state and uh, the criminal state of Israel, it's uh, pretty possible for a false flag attack. Remember, New York actually, NYPD has an office and a police station department in Israel. Remember that? The true reason U.S. fears Iranian nukes is they can deter U.S. attacks. So neocons say Iran must not be allowed to deter U.S. aggression or assert their sovereignty, right? Then from the Council on Foreign Relations, can Romney put foreign policy in play? We expanded on his vision of an American century. We're, of course, talking about the project for the new American century, which was which brought us to wars in the Middle East. Iranian researcher creates a 24-karat gold 
in Lab. Sounds like the Twilight Zone episode where a guy hid out in a cave for a long time and then when he came out he tried paying in gold but it had no worth because they can manufacture it. And U.S. Embassy security chief was slain in Yemen.